Today I'd like to talk about words, and I would like to reflect on three things about words. Words are strong, words are weak, and words bear fruit in action. But before thinking about words, let's review what we've just heard in the Word, the Word of God, the scriptures that have just been proclaimed. In our first reading from the Hebrew scriptures, the prophet Isaiah speaks of the word of God and how effective it is. He compares God's word to the snow and the rain that water the earth and enable the seed and the ground to realize its potential and to grow to become something more. Jesus, in the familiar gospel parable of the sower sowing the seed, used the seed as a metaphor for God's word. As the seed falls into different types of soil, it can either flourish or languish or die. So God's word can be heard and planted in our hearts where it too can either flourish or languish or die. And in our second reading, St. Paul reminds the Romans and us using the image of labor pains that all creation, including us, is in the process of realizing the potential to which we are called. We are called to accomplish something with the word that has been planted in us. Okay, now let's go back and start thinking a little more about words. Words are like seeds, and we plant words like seeds. We plant them in the minds and the hearts of others when we speak them, or we plant them in our own mind or our own heart when we think them. Words are strong. They have the power for good or for ill to build up or to tear down. Were you ever called a name as a kid or even as an adult? And do you still remember how much it hurt? We're living in a time where words are used as weapons against everything that is different. Ethnic epithets, racial slurs, derogatory labels of other sexual orientation have become so prevalent as to seem part of common parlance. But to the recipient of these abusive comments, they can destroy dignity, self-confidence, and hope. Words have the power to destroy people, to destroy lives, to destroy society. On the other hand, words have the power to build up, to liberate, to create, to set free. Spoken with courage, positive words can restore dignity, build up self-confidence, and enkindle hope. But as I mentioned earlier, while recognizing that words are true, are strong, the opposite is also true. Words are weak. T.S. Eliot and Bert Norton from his four quartets wrote on the frailty of language. He said this, words strain, crack, and sometimes break under the burden, under the tension, slip, slide, perish, decay with imprecision, will not stay in place, will not stay still. What he was highlighting was the fact that all too often, words are just not enough. They're inadequate. They're inadequate because the meaning they seek to convey is too strong, too heavy, too important. In a case like that, it is not just enough to say something. You have to do something. Words are not enough. Words have to be put into life, into action, into presence. Every year, the second reading for the Mass of, Christian, of, of Christmas Day is taken from the opening verses of the letter to the Hebrews, and it says this. In times past, God spoke in partial and various ways through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, the Son of whom, St. John says, the Word became flesh. Speaking of the Incarnation, the great Scottish medieval Franciscan theologian Don Scotus proposed that even if Adam and Eve had not sinned, Jesus would have been born into this world because God loves us so much. He desires to be so close to us. In other words, oftentimes words are just not enough. You have to be there. Words have to be put into action. Words have to be lived. It's reminiscent of the wonderful response from the great dancer and choreographer, Martha Graham. When she was asked what one of her dances meant, she said, if I could tell you what it means, I wouldn't have to dance it. 
The word became flesh in Jesus Christ. The word must become flesh in us. Our breath, our voice, the words we speak, the words that we are, the words that we do must be seeds of healing, of hope, and of life for others. Go and live the word that you've been given. Be the word that you've been given. Celebrate the word that you have been given.